How you doing, guys? All right, today we're gonna replace a sport valve. Here it is, right here. And we're gonna replace it on rack one, right here, my low temp rack. So on this rack, I only have two circuits. I have one B, my region frozen food case, and I have one A, my region ice cream case. My 1A is working fine. This is running off of rack pressure. That's why they took the nut out of here. So this is running off the pressure that's on my rack here. This one is also running off of rack pressure. But this one's holding back. It's holding back pressure even though this is all the way stemmed out. I'm still holding up back pressure here so it's not running that rack pressure right now and I'll show you what I mean all right right now I have my suction gauge hooked on to my EPR on the uh, case side of my rack or the case side so I am running at 20 psi on the top of my EPR so now I'm gonna take a pressure reading over here at my suction filter that's tied into my my suction header so i only got one gauge so there we are 20. so i'm gonna take that off and then i'll go around all right so now i'm on the other side of the rack i'm gonna here's my suction filter i'm gonna put my low gauge on there so right now That's, that's why I have to change it. So I'll show you how to go about doing that. So over here at my controller, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go to my, my suction group. Well, I'll go to my circuits first. I'll go to three. And then here is uh, what I'm talking about. One A, one B, right? right there I'm reading minus 11 on my ice cream that's my 1a right there but I'm only getting zero degrees on my 1b the one I just checked these both should be at the same temperature and this is my set points right here so both of these should be at the same temperature so that's why I'm gonna replace this. I, I noticed this. This wasn't an actual service call. I noticed this when I was going through the controller that this was off. So I caught it before it started alarming and before um, it caused any more issues. So now I'll show you how to replace them. All right, so this is the header I'm gonna be working on. So this is an older style type of header. You got two angle valves going in here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and screw these two. So I gotta front seat both of these in. I gotta front seat both of these in. And then here's my my liquid ball valve right here that is tied in. See how it ties in right there? So I gotta go ahead and close this. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting off the liquid going into my cases down on the sales floor and it's just gonna evaporate all that liquid and it's gonna come back a vapor and then once that happens and I'll check my pressures here once my pressures equalize then I know that I got nothing but vapor and then we'll go in the process of pumping the vapor that's left in here into my rack so it'll, it'll go through the, and the rack will still be running. And then it'll just use, it'll work out this system here. So I'll show you that right now. All right, since um, right now I'm at 15 PSI and my high pressure is what? 
40, I'm mean, sorry, just 40 PSI. So since this is holding back this uh, valve here, so there's a uh, bypass screw underneath there. I don't know if you can see it. There's a nut usually goes on right here, but it's missing. You take that nut off, it actually looks like this one right here. So this is your nut right here. You take that off, and then you'll see a little screw in there. You're just gonna stick your screwdriver in there. And one way is for automatic that which will let the valve adjust, or there's one way you can bypass it. And right now we're gonna bypass it, so I, I'm gonna push it open to bypass, and you're gonna start seeing that needle drop. So now we basically are opening this valve wide open. And you're just gonna unscrew this until it stops. See right there, it just stopped. Don't over, because then if you keep going, you're gonna end up, this whole thing's gonna, this whole thing's gonna come out and then it'll be a big mess. So right now, see how it's dropping now? 10? And then now look where we're at. We're right here. Look at that, 20. So that's a faster way of pumping uh, the system down especially one that's holding back. All right, when it's down to zero, then I'll show you how to pump the rest of the vapor into uh, the rack. All right, so now that our pressures are pretty much equal, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave these open. I'm gonna leave, there's, see there's two that go into one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this one because all we're gonna need is just one. And then once I close this one, then we will shut this EPR off at the solenoid to stop the refrigerant flow from coming in. And that will focus the compressors, all three compressors, just to suck out the refrigerant from this system right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start closing these. And then when we're ready to shut that down, we'll come back. All right, so now that I front seated this all the way down, I started this, but I, I just closed it a little less uh, than halfway. This one here, it's a 1A. We're gonna go find that on, an, on the RDP panel, which is the uh, refrigeration defrost panel. So 1A, we've gotta find, and we're gonna shut this solenoid off. So this rack in particular, or I should say that system switch is not on this rack. This is just the compressor. They put it all the way over here on a separate panel. So it's just 1A right here. We're gonna shut that off. Now we're gonna go ahead and double check, make sure the solenoid's de-energized. We're dead. So this one's energized, just to let you see that it that is working, so this is dead. So now we just got the compressors focusing on this right here. See, so now we're below 10. Uh, same here. We're just about 10 right there. All right, so now to speed up the process, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that that way so I can see. We got one compressor running right now. But I'm gonna force another compressor on. Because right now it's only calling for one compressor because of the suction. So I'm just gonna go ahead and force it in. And I'm just gonna do it a little bit. That way we can see where we're at. See, we're just, uh, we're just about there. I'm gonna do it one more time. There you go. And that should be pretty good right there. I don't know if you can see that very well, but that should be pretty good. Let's go look at the suction just to make sure. And if it's in a vacuum, that doesn't matter. We can always open up the valve to take it out of the vacuum. So we're almost there. And I'll keep doing this and I'll show you where we're at. All right, so now that we got it all situated, Got a zero PSI on my suction. 
and about a zero, looks like five, but this gauge is a little off. That's about a zero as well. So, yeah. There's nothing to that. It's just, uh, it's just vapor right there. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this off. I uh, take this off. That way I won't have any pressure in here because there's like maybe one pound of pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, take these off and then I'll show you how to unbolt this. I gotta shut the solenoid off so we won't get any um, uh, power to this to be energized. And then we'll take this off and then we'll have to screw these here. So I'll show you how to do all that. So now that we have no pressure in here, in this thing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and finish shutting this off so we could completely isolate this system right here. And then I'll go ahead and turn that one back on. And uh, that, that way that one will hold, maintain temperature. And this one right here, um, we can go ahead and um, work on it while the, while the whole rack is still running. So make sure that's tightened down. And then um, go shut off the toggle switch, which is all the way back here. Right here, here's B right here. So since we already isolated B, I'm gonna turn A back on. And then that way, again, like I said, we can have that system running. So just to verify one more time, that's off. This is B right there. And that is back on. That is A right there. Okay, so we got that back up and running. And now we can focus on this. So now let me grab my tools and to take that to take this off. Alright, so now that we got that off, I'm just gonna get my screwdriver take this off. Remember, this is de-energized, so we don't need to worry about that burning up. Um, I'm just going to take this off, just so it'll be out of the way. And then normally what I like to do, I like to take the Schrader core out. That way I won't have any um, vapor trapped in the system, because that's the last thing you want is vapor to be trapped in here. And you take this off and it pops out at you. So uh, we're just trying to be safe here and not cause any more issues that needs to be. So I take off the low and then I take off the high. So let me do that. And then normally, well always I should say, I always put in new Schrader cores when doing this all the time. That's a habit I have. And I'm gonna see. And that's what I usually tell everybody that works with me. Always perfect opportunity to put new straighter cords in. Alright. Alright, so now that we loosened um, we loosened these bolts right here, I loosened all four. I cracked these open a little bit. So I need to tap on this to break the seal. gave me a little bit of a hard time. But that should come right out. Ooh. Dang. So there it is. Just a hollow shell. That's why you can reuse these right here. 
unless this whole thing was really messed up and it had big grooves in here that didn't allow it, but this is in good shape. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, as far as this goes, that's why I just leave this on. It saves a lot of hassle with welding and stuff like that. So we're just gonna clean this gasket off right here and um, clean this up and then put the new one on. So many of you know, been in the field, this is a great gasket to use. You know, for the little gaskets, it gets right under there. So, let me finish this off and put the new one on. All right, now that we got the new gasket on, scrape the old one off. This O-ring is very important right here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's an O-ring right there, rubber. Um, this is very important that, right here. That's very important that that doesn't get pinched. This is, hasn't been used, it's brand new. So the, the O-ring is hugged around it. Now, if it was a used one and you were to pull it out, most likely the O-ring has already absorbed the oil and it will expand on you. And then it's nearly impossible to put back in without messing up the O-ring itself. So you're just gonna just twist it back and forth, fill it lock in right there. Give it a good shove in there. See, because what you're looking for is the top of that little hole gonna line up with that so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna slide that in there it is just slid right in all right now we're locked in place so now we can put the other half on there and the other half is right here in my box here's the other half right here so all you're gonna do is just the same thing. That little hole on top is gonna line up with that exact same thing. You're just gonna set it right on top. There it is. Just I can feel it now. We'll move back and forth. So then now I'm gonna put my bolts on there. What I'm gonna do is just to snug it. I'm not gonna actually. It's just like a car tire. One on one side. One on the other. this on I'm gonna go ahead and um, torque it down with the um, the nut for this and my wrench just to make sure we got a nice uh, nice and tight on there yeah that was pretty good size these up right here that's your port size that's important but if you're gonna do a swap out like this the line size doesn't matter the connection size that that's gonna be that's gonna be the line size either three, either one and three three eighths or one and five eighths or one and one eighth line um, that won't matter what matters is is uh, that right there so we're gonna go ahead and came with a new solenoid coil so we're gonna go ahead and install that so we're gonna replace this one for a new one and we'll do that right now so before I do that I got to put my shredder core back in that's a, that's a new one by the way and this is going on my liquid side
go. And on this valve here, this one's brand new, so it, it came with one already. Uh, right so it already came with one. All I can do right now, just make sure that it's nice and snug in there. Uh, put the cap back on. So now we're just gonna pressurize it, check for leaks, and make sure that um, uh, I have no leaks right here, and then we'll go ahead and open it up. So right now we're gonna pressurize it. What I usually do is just pump a little bit up, open that up, close it up, wait for the pressure to build up, have a suction gauge on there, I mean, 10 pounds is good enough, but I'm gonna let a little bit more in there. I'm gonna let it rise up and then we'll, we'll leak check it right now. Alrighty, so I got the bubbles. Just gonna spray a good amount all around. I'll get a light so we can see a little bit better. No bubbles. And let's see here. No bubbles coming out. So we have a good seal. So now we're going to go ahead and um, open up this system. And I could even open up without turning this on because I have my by bypass nut right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew this. And I'm going to get my screwdriver. It's automatic. It's already an automatic. But I'm gonna see. You can see where it says auto goes this way and open goes this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. So until, until it stops, it'll you see right there. That's where it stopped right there. Right where it's built snug. That's where you want to stop it. All right. So now that we got that open. So now I can go ahead and open up my ball valve. Open it up a little slow, not too fast. Okay, there we go. And then I can open up my suction. And these are one at a time, so we'll open these. My gauge is already dropping. Still opening. We're we'll see where it ends up right now. I, I, I don't even know where the exact suction pressure is right now. So let me finish opening up both of these valves, and then we'll double check our pressure. All right, here's my old solenoid, here's my new solenoid. I already punched out my hole. I got my wires. So I'm just gonna take these off. Always check to make sure there's no power. And then we'll swap this out, but I need two hands, so let's do this. All right, now that we got this wired in, here. And then get this clip and put it on. Alright, there we go, right there. Got that bat on. So now we'll come off. We'll put my gauge back right here. Uh, then we'll go ahead and put this in automatic and see if this is uh, not holding back. Alright, got my low pressure gauge. We'll put that on first. The 
finisher. About 12. Take that back off because I only got one low pressure gauge with me. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next service call.